got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Ha <laughs> ha. You're mad. Miss Wig, Miss Wig. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Miss Wig, Yana. I got your wig. Well, that was a nice way that you ended the season, but you didn't find your sweet spot mm, since then. Yet. It seems like it's gotten worse. <laughs> but I think the number one question that people wonder when they watch the show is, what happened? Were you seeing Nothing. each other less when the no, season that, had yes. started? We didn't see each other that much over the summer, but that could happen. Well, for most you of the summer I spent in Los Angeles. Cassandra, a friend of mine's husband died. Right, your friend who was grieving. And, and you I were there most of that summer. Most of the summer. And it was so you came time. back and the show started filming. And I came filming. back and we saw each other. We had lunch. We were texting. We were totally in it felt communication. Normal. I did think there was like a little shift, but it's happened in many friendships where just something happens and then it goes away or, you know, everything isn't going to be perfect. No relationship is perfect. So right. I think that we were a little bit on different pages. I could feel it during the summer because the summer before, I think we had spent a lot of time together and this one, we didn't because of both of our parts. Right, and you knew I was training for the marathon. I ran a half marathon, yes. but we were seeing each other. Well, I called you to take you out for your birthday. We went to, to Montauk and you didn't, you made me drop you off and pick you up. You didn't even like invite me. Like I, I had to wait for you to come outside. And I thought that was sort of different. Like I would have thought you'd be like, I don't know. You just made me pick uh, you Cassandra up and drop you off. Cassandra didn't really want to see people. So I didn't want to introduce new people in her life. She's mm -hmm. still grieving. But you grieving. did it in LA also. You had a, group, a bunch of group things with your friends and girlfriends. And, and no, you I didn't. include me. You did. I so was we're all going Cassandra. out to dinner at Medea with a bunch of people. I didn't even think to include you. Cassandra and her friend and I were going out I'm to dinner. I'm just saying, you there didn't was include no, me, and that is how I felt. She I felt maybe, slighted. Maybe she maybe felt I slighted. felt left out. But I also saw you a bunch of times. Actually, I was trying to figure out a long weekend for us to go to the Golden, Golden Door. Door. I asked some friends if they could borrow private planes for your Puerto Rico mission. And I was like, I'm going to help you. I'm so proud of you. And I have tons of text messages to show you. I, and I won't bore. I won't. I would I won't. love to see those. Well, I mean, tons I can go that. through them if you... Please don't. Well, okay. And then September rolled around. That's when we had that conversation that you recounted to Dorinda. I was stunned. I kept saying, I don't understand what you're saying. And I think... As a friend, because a lot of people say things to me about you, and they're not, not necessarily nice. And I always, what I say is, well, I don't know. Maybe she was having a bad day that day. I love her. She's a great girl. And when you were recounting and the vice story. Versa, by the way. Okay, when you were recounting the story about Adam. And I remember saying to you, you know what? When people say nasty things about Adam to you, don't pile on. Just shut that down. I thought you were broken up with him. And then once okay. I realized that whether broken up or not, you were still kind of having coffee or any, I, I retreated immediately. I you said, know what it seems like? It seems like you kept having these, these conversations, a lot of miscommunication, and you kept kind of wanting it to be back to normal. I you wanted could never it to be get back to well, normal. I, think back I don't track. think Bethany wanted it ever to be back to normal. You were ready for it to be over. No, I, I came to you and said, let's talk, let's talk. You were dismissive, condescending. Can, you you didn't, didn't want to talk. And then when we finally kind of did have this good talk after the holidays, and we, and we, I thought you we sat had to talk, and, you and, and then you right after and the interview right said, I don't have high hopes about our makeup, but that's what you said. No, 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 it wasn't. I said, said I, I was proceeding that. with caution. When you try to make boundaries with some people, they just don't, they just don't, they're not down with that. So maybe she saw it as, um, as more of a, um, you know, an attack against her. So what kind of boundaries were you trying to set and why? I think she was very, she liked the friendship the way it was. And it was like, I think I said on the show, it was too much Bethany, none of Carol in that friendship, you know, but there were definitely things that she did that any girl, any friend would have been like, uh, you know, very upset by. Say, where are you going? I say, I'm going to LA. We have this conversation a little bit. Go. I say, I'm being yelled at, have a good flight. I turn my phone off. I open my phone when I land. And you say, why are you, are you being so cold? Did I miss something? I am your friend, Ramona is evil. I said, oh, well, You're I welcome. said, Bethany, well, I'm not the last thing I am. I'm not sad. I have no idea why you would think that. Just stop, please. I want to enjoy the holiday. 
And then you say, I agree, but you seem sad. And then you said something about Ramona, which I'm not going to repeat. And I said, I am oh, off. I'm going bitchy. to the spa. <laughs> Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. I love you. Then a couple days later, makes me sad. I miss you. For some reason, you think you, I betrayed you, which I did not. I said, we shifted and we did. You are so cold. I said I, that. Yes, you said that. Right. And I, I was, first of all, I'm at dinner with my friend who lost her husband. It's his birthday, right? So I say it's More. a lot and not a conversation for text. I'm relaxing. Please, let's talk. Let's talk after the after New Year. Pages. XO. And she continues to text. Well, we are friends. I keep trying out. You're shutting me out. I'm, it's hurting my feelings. Never mind. It doesn't matter. I have going on. It went on and on. You don't hear and her. And then she's hurting. On. Okay, that that was it. That, that doesn't that's seem. Like, but you're wondering, like, what's the big deal? What's so wrong? I'm saying, gee, she's saying, geez, that's a lot. I'm saying, I love you. Whatever. It's back and forth. It's a normal thing, yeah. right? But what's going on on the show is I said one thing about you. I said I thought you didn't that you didn't have a career, and and I, you were talking badly about me from the from the that for the whole season. No, I, oh my God, Bethany, did I ever say any? I couldn't say anything you guys need a nicer therapist. about watch you. The I never watched the show. You should watch the show, the Bethany. Show. Literally she from the jump, it was a drumbeat yeah, you of. You said negative of the, things about me the whole season. I no, think you both not. said what? negative things about each other. No, we, frankly, yeah. it was interesting to see in the playback of the whole season that. That, that I was, I was kind of almost like, I wouldn't say the villain, I wasn't the villain, but like, you know, you felt sorry because it looked like I was like sort of dumbed Bethany and I was just interested in Tinsley. And, and no one really remembers that little, you know, the inciting incident. She never audience, said anything really bad to about no, you to me. In the never. interviews, because she can't say it to my face. Bethany, all you did this me with your was bully, Let's hear. Brag Let's and hear. Bitch. Let's that hear how I believe. Let's hear you, some examples. Every every Let's hear single, an example. Okay, excuse Let's me. Let's hear an example. I will give you an example. Let's every do it. Whoa, wait. And what happens is the show's airing, but you're still doing those confessional interviews. So you're seeing, so you'll see, like Andy said, well, you said shit about her. And like, yeah, I did the very last confessional interview I filmed was like two weeks before the reunion, but I had seen the whole season of all this terrible shit that she was saying. It started with Tinsley and I. Um, that was a bashing and a bullying. I you two yeah. friends? I'll tell you, because you know, I can't Go even remember them all. Your because, copious research. No, because I couldn't even remember all the all the insults and passive aggressive stuff. The only stuff. two things okay. I said all season what was, was that what you were didn't have a career. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was it, really. That was, that was it. And you know, what? Oh, oh my God. You didn't have a child. That was okay. it. First, I'm a clingy girlfriend who's thick as thieves. Then Ooh, I'm an unavailable. So are you going to okay. be okay? Okay, are we going to do are this? You are, you gonna to continue? Okay? are you going to continue to bully me? Or am I going to be able to speak? No. Am I going to be able to speak, I just want to make sure you're a clingy girlfriend. I'm are sorry. Gonna, are you gonna, am I going to go be get able to anger speak? management Am I going to be able to nice. speak? Sure, go ahead. Okay, go on. Bethany, let her speak. So she called you a clingy girlfriend. Okay, let me, no, it goes on and on and on. You're the least clingy person I know. You're very independent. Then I'm an unavailable girlfriend who- Ooh, you're unavailable? Oh my God. What else do we have? What she does is she creates this narrative, this false narrative, narrative about me, this false narrative that I'm some girl who's this, this, and this. Word. It's completely false. No, okay. Half of it is lies. So, so, so she said this you're is, a clingy girlfriend. Yes. You're, okay. I'm an unavailable girlfriend who doesn't text or answer her phone. I'm not wanted in Puerto Rico because apparently I care more about clothes than causes. In fact, I cut my hair. Now I like Cabrera's hair. I post some things on... Instagram of me and my friends, oh, like selfies, all I this. care about is selfies. I'm sad, I'm lonely, I'm in pain over oh a breakup. God. I'm a know-it-all politician with a dead husband. I'm a puppet, I'm unself-aware, and I'm self-involved. I didn't self -involved. say puppet, Ramona did. I'm unself-aware, <laughs> and I'm self-involved. I'm superficial, I think I'm a high-maintenance, I think Bethany's talking about herself, she's talking about you. Husbandless, childless, jobless. I think the most, one of the most hurtful things that, um, that I watched on the show is when Bethany said, in an, in an effort to prove this idea that Tinsley and I were like this, and I was no longer interested in Bethany, which couldn't have been further from the truth. She said, well, they have so much more in common. They, they don't have a, neither of them have a career or a husband or children. Wow. Well, that's, that's hard. Like, that was, that was, this, that was hard to, that was hard to take in. It, that last reason was hard. I did feel hurt about the things that she was saying, especially like I have no husband. Okay, well, my husband passed away. We didn't have children, and that didn't like. It's not like I wouldn't have wanted children with my husband or after with anyone, but just didn't work out for me, right? So 
in that way. But I brought it up at the reunion and they like, they just, all of them like came down on me, like, and said, she never said that she, you know, Andy was like screaming at me. And Bethany should give a master class in gaslighting. <laughs> So, but what do you first of all, I would like to know when you got your medical degree. What do you? What, what, Bethany, you can't say that. You when did you get your medical degree? All the time. I didn't say no. You're calling you. me a drunk. You're I calling this one a loser. This one a, an idiot. I'm asking I mean, you. I don't you need your, no. We don't know what needs a medical degree. You just need two eyes. You are the one that said on television that I don't have a career. You don't have a career. Is this what you do? Is this what you call female empowerment, Bethany? Is that your brand is all about female you empowerment? You shamed me in the no, blog saying I held you, said... you accountable for what you said in the television show about me not no, having a you career. Said, and this is what story. I was doing I'm when you were doing B movies. You. Was That's that exactly shaming? Exactly what when that I was no, it's not shaming. It was the truth. When, when, I was... when you were working as That's an actress. That's all I've done is from B movies you were... to this show. No, I said sorry. I said natural food chef. I said all of this stuff. I said no, you called me a success. caterer. You did not say well, a natural food chef. I thought it was chef. a caterer. Okay, I was well, actually uh, yeah. a natural food chef long right. before it existed okay. as a category okay. for people like your boyfriend. Right. Right. So okay. yeah, well, so that's a take too. your resume so, okay. up that, to that, mine that, any day, and lady. I will bring and I will match my resume well, up to yours any day. Well, let's get yours into the current era, the current decade, and then we can Bethany, talk about people, it. Bethany, women have careers, right? Their whole lives, and then they they pivot, and then they have another. You brought it up, not me. Yes, but that you brought it up. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I have no shame in my career. No, you brought it up on the show. She said she had no career except for this show. Oh, she, she does. She, Good way. That's female thin. empowerment. If you, the best female she's empowerment, a, you can have it. You and your brand. Writer. Oh it's dashing God. somebody every week oh on a blog God. is female empowerment. That's every week. holding you accountable for the things you said about me on the show. And I will read every no, single you blog that I stand by. No, you bashed me. Every bashed me every day. Because you bashed me on the show. I did not bash. Tell me how I bashed you on I the show. I just read the whole list. You bashed each other on the show. You bashed each other on the show. We Andy. bash each other on the show. I didn't bash her on the show. I, I you didn't bash me. her on the show. Are you kidding me? Carol did not You're bash afraid her. of her too? Um, she had said, though, Bethany, mm -hmm. on the show, she was like, Carol has no career, has no her kids, husband. and yeah. has no husband. That Which was, was the biggest. so cruel because you are a widow and you lost yeah. your husband. But when that you moment, I, it wasn't on the air, but I kept saying, no, this is what you said. And that's very hurtful. No, it was on and, the air. No, that part was. But then oh. um, Andy was yelling and the producers came out and they kept saying, she didn't say that you didn't have a husband, Carol. She didn't say that. So, and I, and there was a moment in the reunion, I think they left it in. I'm like, she did. She did say that. I'm not like me. I'm not trying to make a drama. That is what it said. That's really hurtful. And they're like, no, sorry. And it was such a gaslighting moment. So they were I saying she did say the thing about no career, career no, no kids, kids but, she but never not. mentioned my late husband. And that's not true. And then but still and then no career, Andy no kids saying, is really mean too. I know, but Andy was like, no, the <laughs> just, I'm having like... Uh, but the, the, the Andy was in his ear. He's like, no, the producers are telling me they're watching the episode in the control room. There's no control room. We're, in, we're taping them. Like, and, and they're telling me that she didn't say that. I mean, it was so. And I think that's what led to me saying you're so full of shit or something. No, but your last thing to her was that your last thing on the show Andy, was. you understand the show. Right, when so you she watch lies it on and the you show. see the confessional interviews, I'm seeing what you said about me, about not having a job, not having a husband. Right, about Carol that whole season said, I don't understand what's going on with Bethany. I didn't Bethany understand either, How did Bethany. it change? I don't understand. I didn't understand either until I watched the show. And I realized I was really really trying to salvage our friendship and you didn't seem that interested and I only could imagine because you knew what you had said and all those confessional interviews oh, at that at the end I won I thought every I was gonna say, thank God we're done with this season thank God uh, we can like she go did back say that to we me. can just like regroup yeah. and then I started watching the show and then I thought she's just superficial you I knew think one you of those things. I think you, you changed. Th you knew me. You, you know me. You know one of those things. I think you changed. Things. I think you okay. changed, changed at all. You no, became like Patty and gossipy and I, think I didn't you change. No, Good. She has yes, changed. my eyes are open. No, you know, I, I think you change. change. We're going to no, move on. I'm sorry to see this yet. one go because it well, was fun seeing you two together. I'll say that. Maybe they both changed for the better, but definitely changed. Well, I wouldn't say you two. Don't say it's done. Just put a comma on it. What does that mean? Yeah, because, you know, things change, you know. I'm going to make up with Luann eventually, so there you go. You two can... It's, so. There you go. Okay. I don't think what you said there at that dinner is quite what she said about me in the blogs and with her friends. Okay. Oh, my God.
did this experience change the way you approach friendships? I will say now I'm much more careful about who I spend time with. Um, I'm much, and, and I'm not saying that it was probably a, a, a lesson that I need to learn. Like not everyone has the same motivation as me. Not and, and not to say, not to judge theirs to be lesser than mine. It's just different. But I definitely do cannot spend time with um, people who aren't. Um, 100% straight and honest and real. And it, it does linger with me. Like now I really stay away. Like I can recognize narcissists like from a mile away. <laughs> like I just, I recognize these these um, traits. Now I'm much more careful, not only in friendships, but in romantic relationships too. You know, it was, it was a bumpy lesson, you know. It, it was it was it was bumpy, but I think at the end of the day, it was it was a lesson that I needed to, you know, it was something I just need to focus on. In the glamorous world of reality television, where secrets and scandal thrive, meet Amelia, the cunning and captivating real housewife who would stop at nothing to maintain her coveted position on the wildly popular network show. Amelia has always been a woman of ambition navigating her way through the cutthroat social circles of the elite. But being a housewife on the small screen offered her a tantalizing taste of fame, fortune, and influence that she simply couldn't resist. With her perfectly coiffed hair, designer wardrobe, and a smile that could disarm even the most skeptical producer, Amelia quickly became a fun favorite, captivating audiences with her larger-than-life persona. But being a housewife is far from the glitz and glamour it appears to be. It's a world where alliances are forged and broken, and every move is calculated to secure a place in the spotlight. Melia, the master manipulator, knows this all too well. She understands that her job as a housewife is not just about entertaining the masses, but about playing the game of power, influence, and survival. As the show progresses, Amelia finds herself entangled in a web of intricate relationships with her fellow housewives. Friendships turn into rivalries, and alliances are tested as they vie for the center stage. Secrets are whispered, scandals are exposed, and carefully constructed facades begin to crumble, revealing the true nature of these women. But Amelia is not one to be outshined. She knows that to remain relevant, she must adapt and evolve. She becomes a master of manipulation, whispering sweet nothings to the right people, planting seeds of doubt in the minds of her enemies, and strategically positioning herself in the narrative that unfolds before the camera's lens. Amidst the chaos, Amelia learns that even the seemingly invincible can falter. Family dramas, personal struggles, and unexpected tragedies threaten to unravel the carefully crafted image she so meticulously built. And as the pressure mounts, she must decide how far she is willing to go to protect her status as the Queen of Housewives. In this gripping portrayal of reality TV's underbelly, behind the scenes of a housewife takes readers on an exhilarating journey into the world of fame, fortune, and deception. Will Amelia's ruthless determination to stay on top ultimately lead to her downfall? Or will she prove that she is indeed the ultimate real housewife, capable of conquering both the small screen and the drama that lies beneath it? Ew. Uh, like JK, but like maybe not. But thank you for watching. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say. Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids. What? 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 <laughs> you're so upset. But that's like okay because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax because I said what I said.